All right, let's see. So we apparently have a new developer note from Brown Dust 2's developer team. That's a December update news. Let's see what they're talking about here. All right. So, hello, this is Brown Dust 2 PD Junhi Lee. All right, let's have a look at this. I would like to address the skill cutscene issue before entering the developer's notes. Uh, recently, many players have expressed their disappointment in the quality of skill cutscenes. Firstly, I fully understand your disappointment in piercing magic bow linear skill cutscene quality. Yeah, I feel like it's not like the quality is bad, but it's pretty simple, right? So I feel like w compared to some other characters' skill cutscene, I do understand that like it seems a bit subpar, right? Uh, I apologize for lack of care in tailoring our services to your needs in this regard. Okay. I must admit we're in a rush to update the existing skull cutscene as soon as possible, wherever circumstances cannot be as an excuse. I sincerely apologize against the player who have been waiting eagerly for the 1.5 year anniversary update. So essentially, they kind of like gone back to try and update some skill cutscenes for characters that didn't really like have big ones or something like that. So I know they did Seer recently, and I guess they also did Eleanor, but people have been kind of like disappointing the quality of Eleanor's ones, right? Uh, we have discussed with the illustration and directing teams to improve the cutscenes that cause complaints. As for Eleonir, we will improve her scenes presentation, such as by adding a background or removing the doll. We'll also adjust Luvens' cutscene and change Levia's body shape to match her figure. Okay. We're very well aware to value the skill cutscenes hold for you, the player of Brown Dust 2. When it comes to cutscenes, we will take meticulous care of various elements, such as motions, effects, body shapes, and balance, as well as the quality of illustration. Let's move on to the update. I will give you the details of the update that will take place before the 1.5 year anniversary, as well as some of the things we are preparing for the anniversary. I will also share the results of the collaboration event survey along with other news. Oh, okay, rerun. We are getting a Nightmare Winter event pack rerun on December 5th, which is going to be early next month. First Nightmare Winter event pack showcase in last year's winter half anniversary will return. Travel to a modern city that appears peaceful on the outside, however, a ruthless ruler looms behind the scenes, watching over and controlling everyone in the city, and disposing of anyone who goes against their will. Yet, there were those who came together to resist such unreasonable rule. Hidden truths are revealed and determination blooms through the sacrifices of precious people. We hope you'll dive into this heartwarming story that unfolds in the cold winter city. So I wasn't playing back then, so this is a great opportunity for me to actually enjoy this rerun. On top of that, we are obviously getting some rerun for the Nightmare Winter. And what is absolutely awesome here is that apparently Nightmare Bunny Eclipse is incredibly strong. So that's the opportunity for me to get her. We also have a Masquerade Celia and Anti-Dystopia Diana and Stray Cat Rue. I do have Stray Cat Rue, but I don't think I have the others. So this is great. Oh, do I have Stray Cat Rue? I sure don't know. In addition to Nightmare Bunny Eclipse and Masquerade Celia, which were, were released as limited costume for the half anniversary, Anti Dystopia Diana and Stray Cat Rue will be available for you to obtain. Okay, I think I do have those. All Stray Cat Rue costume will be distributed up to plus 5 upgrade. Oh, wow. So if you didn't obtain it last year, don't miss out on this opportunity. Okay, awesome. There's something I would like to add to the story of Nightmare Winter. The character pack and event packs in Brothers 2 are based on the parallel universe concept. Some packs share the same universe, while others play out in different worlds. In the Click Click Summer Season event updating in the summer of 2024, Eclipse and Morpia appeared as actresses, starring in a movie named Nightmare Winter. This led to many users speculating that Nightmare Winter pack may be the plot of the movie. I would like to clarify that Nightmare Winter and Click Click Summer are based on two different worlds, and that the costume theme in the summer pack is a parody-like adaptation of the Nightmare Winter concept. In other words, Nightmare Winter story is setting that actually exists within the pack. From now on, we will provide a clearer description of the parallel universes in each pack to ensure you can enjoy the story without any inconvenience. Okay. We're also getting the rerun for Marry Me. This is a Seals Online event. They announced it before. This is going to be happening next week. Um, and this allows us to get a rerun of Refitia in her cute wedding dress. A new story unfolds in the fairy tale land, the setting of the fifth character pack. In Marry Me, a villain from the fairy tale land who desires a bride kidnaps several princesses. You get to experience the bold adventure of Refitia, who aspires to become the ultimate bride to rescue them. The Finn Hunter, Bluebeard, Darkness uh, boss in Marimi will be re-released, although Bluebeard was a boss with Darkness property, will be re-released with the same property. To maintain the balance of the recent Finn Hunter property rotation, however, some gimmicks have been adjusted to enhance the fun of strategizing. Awesome. The boss is now a pattern of applying a shield to itself, and the quicker you attack the shield consecutively, the more damage you can deal. Awesome. So here we have the rerun seasonal event, Fireworks Memory, that's going to be on December 5th, so that's actually going to be at the same time as the rerun of the Nightmare Winter event pack. Naruto. The fireworks memories, which covers the epilogue of the Nightmare Winter pack, will also be released, obviously. 
After that day, which was like a nightmare, I gained something precious and irreplaceable. A new story begins as members of the resistance organization Leviathan devise a new strategy to end the chaos in the city. The firework memories event story takes place after the ending of the Nightmare Winter story. Recommend reading the story after claiming the Nightmare Winter event special main pack main quest story. There we go. And we'll be getting the EON Finn Hunter boss of the water element. So it used to be light, this changed to water. And uh, the boss is a pattern of attacking the character while also granting a buff every turn. Now we have a detail regarding the pickup for November and December. And here we can see we have Queen of Signatures Mikaela. The Pure White Blessing Refitea Rerun, New Employee Nebras, The Wind Dancer Venaka, which that's new. Wind Dancer Venaka. Who that? And then for December 17th, we have two to be announced characters, uh, but we'll also be getting the rerun of Nightmare Bunny Eclipse and Adventure of the Unknown Diana. And then on January 23rd, we'll be getting a rerun limited Masquerade Bunny Celia. Lovely. Now here it says the two new pickup updates on December 17th will be released through the 1.5 year anniversary livestream. Okay. The pickup period for new employee neighbors will be extended by seven days to celebrate the 1.5 uh, year interaction contact updates. Um, the update will take place on Tuesday instead of Thursday. Due to this difference, there will be changes to some of the pickup schedule. Wind Dancer Venaka is right there and she looks very pretty. The Queen of Signature Michaela has magic DPS with light property. She consumes extra SP when s using skills but deals high damage proportionally to her penalty. New Hyo Nebris has a physical DPS with wind property. She deals more damage to more be the more beneficial effects are applied to her. So the more buff she has, the more damage she deals. Wind Dancer Venaka is a magic DPS and a supporter of wind property. She makes the enemy vulnerable to wind property as she deals damage. Very interesting. So like, uh, kind of like half DPS, half buffer. Now we'll be getting some exclusive gear, obviously, that are tied to the character. You can pause here if you want to see in more detail, but essentially it reflects what we're getting in terms of capture for the pickup there. Very, very cool. Notice, regarding Finn Hunter and pickup policy, Finn Hunter is divided into a preparation period and a hunting period. The players have pointed out that they feel significant pressure to prepare all strategies on the first day when a new pickup appears during the hunting period, and we wholeheartedly agree with this opinion. As pickup costume greatly impact the clearing of Finn Hunter, we will release them during the preparation period from now on to provide you with enough time to practice before the hunt. Lovely. Also, we have again discussed the gameplay method of forcing players to use specific costumes with the planning team. From now on, we'll put more care into our gameplay design to offer a wider variety of strategies. Also, focus more on finding the balance while maintaining the original difficulty. Essentially, they don't want people to feel like they have to absolutely get the new costume and max them out as fast as possible to actually be able to beat the new Finn Hunter. Uh, to clear the new Finn Hunter, which I think is a good idea to kind of try to uh, meet both ways and allow players that have like older costume or haven't fully invested in the new ones yet to also be able to uh, clear uh, the content properly and not be penalized because of it, right? So this is great news. It's good to see that they're really listening to feedback and they're trying to make sure that everybody can be, can have a satisfying experience, right? Now, we have the official season for Tower Salvation that's going to come out next month, uh, next week, sorry. After five trial season, the Tower Salvation will be converted into an official season. Increase in season target score. With the start of the official season, the target score will be increased from 2 billion to 15 billion. The target score may change every season, and the score will be determined by compiling several factors, such as Tower Salvation, participation level, participation rate, and length of the previous season. And here we can see um, it's, uh, it's going to be 15 billion. It's going to be running for four weeks. Naruto. The increase in reward following the conversion to an official season reward will also be increased. Awakening Elixir will get 150. Refining Crystal will go up to 300, which is 100 more. Ancient Crystal will increase by 10. And Refining Powder will increase by uh, 1500. Other improvement relics will low usage rate will be buffed. Effect of certain choice in the event room will be buffed. Requirements will be added for score bonus achievements. Skill specs of certain monster will be changed. We hope you enjoyed the Tower of Salvation. Uh, as official season, it will continue to listen to your voices and improve our content. Great! Additional improvement to Guild Raid. So Guild Raid is something new. It has happened recently. It's been added as a new Guild content because it was lacking. And now they are going to be putting some changes into effect early next month. Additional improvement will be implemented to Guild Raid. Soon you will be able to check each Guild member's recent Guild Raid battle records according to the dates in the Guild member list. The battle records will clearly display the play level information. You'll also be able to sort your guild members based on the contribution rate on the guild page and check the battle record from the previous season. Additionally, the UI regarding the repel feature will be improved. When you press the repel button, you'll be able to see which guild members increase the repel stats and which level. 
Great. The fourth guild, guild raid boss, Rusur Singha, the ruler of darkness, will be available on December 5th. Um, they were designed to provide a high buff value, but make it harder to endure the boss attacks when more characters try to receive the buff. You will see better results by paying careful attention to the placement of a smaller number of characters who can use the buff given by the boss so that they can use it to the advantage. So a lot of the bosses in the game, if you guys don't know, have like patterns where they attack you, but when they hit you, they actually give you a buff. So you kind of have to plan and make yourself get hit by those attacks, but here they deal like a lot of damage. So you got to be very careful about who can tank the hit to get those damage buff, right? Now moving on, 1.5 year anniversary update plans. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, news of the 1.5 year anniversary update. Uh, the update will be on Tuesday, December 17th, so basically mid-December. And the pre registration period will last for two weeks, from December 3rd to December 17th. A live stream for the 1.5 year anniversary will also be waiting for you, along with special live stream for Taiwan and Japan. One for each region. Okay, I'm confused. Why do we have pre-registration period? Why are we getting a pre-registration period for a life for a one uh point five year anniversary? We're probably gonna get some information about that. We're still finalizing the detail, but give you a sneak peek of some images during under development. As many of you have high hope for this update, we'll give you more detail in the 1.5 year anniversary live stream. So here we are seeing some very cyberpunkish outfits, right? Uh, man, I don't, is that that could be just yes ass? It's hard to say. I feel like this could be Levia, maybe like the red and black and the hair. I don't know who would be in the back here. Maybe it could be Luvencia. Maybe it could be someone like um Morpia. Maybe it's hard to say. Uh, here we get birthday so something's going on there that's oh damn what's going on here she seems to be is she like in prison or something oh this is obviously that's obviously the um what's the name this is uh nebrius i don't know what's going on here but this looks badass yeah i wonder what's happening here probably a new character uh that has to be refitia with her little phone that is uh, bananas, okay. Uh, something's going on here. <clears throat> uh, okay, so a lot of things to see here. Uh, I'll let you pause if you want to enjoy uh, the sneak peeks um, at your leisure. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Now, moving on. Development team responds to player key suggestions regarding gameplay. Received a list of suggestions for improvement from over 10 high ranking guilds worldwide through a customer service center. As the suggestion reaches through this venue, it is possible for us to answer them using the customer service center, again, similar to the other inquiries. However, we felt that it would be best to deliver the development team's thoughts and directions along with the response below the items the development team has, re has reviewed and shared by the developer's notes. The suggestions have been written as closely to the original as possible to avoid any misunderstanding, with only some parts being condensed for clarity. So, the suggestion, a real-time leaderboard that displayed the top 10 guild, uh, the guild emblem effect feels somewhat plain. Display the top three guild emblem instead of the trophy on the second floor in chapter three, Mercenary Guild. I'd like to ask for new achievement in title based on guild rankings. The suggestions above were met with a positive reaction by the team. We'll evaluate them thoroughly and implement them whenever possible. So essentially, more incentives for uh, guild raid and guild ranking. Finn Hunt, some players will reach for the top 1,110 thousand, uh, thing that rewards could be improved. Then words such as refining crystal to the end of season rewards for this ranking will be a meaningful incentive to loyal players. We wholly agree with the player who compete for the high ranks in Finn Hunter. However, increasing the currency reward for the top ranking players in competitive contents aligned differently with our current approach to avoid excessive competition. As such, we decided to defer this issue. So they're going to be... There's something they agree with, but they're going to try to figure it out to avoid... Uh, causing excessive stress and competition on player base. Suggestion. I strongly recommend that you conduct a thorough test before releasing update for Finn Hunter, playing Finn Hunter with bugs, disrupt user experience, and destroy the competitive environment. We deeply understand the frustration that may arise when Finn Hunter does not work properly due to bugs. Due to bugs, many players would like to have lost uh, all the progress toward conquering the Finn Hunter. We sincerely apologize. Uh, oh, many players would likely have lost. Uh, we apologize for the inconvenience. We're constantly putting effort. Essentially, they apologize for the bugs and they're going to make sure to more thoroughly check for various scenarios. 
I hope you do not allow characters renting from guild members of friends in Finn Hunter. Maintaining the integrity of single player competitive modes such as the Finn Hunter and PvP is crucial for ensuring that each player's efforts are rewarded and fair. At the Disappointed Character System update in Guild Raid, we've received some suggestions regarding the rental of friends' characters. We have not yet confirmed the development of the character rental system. We'll take this into consideration and review it during the planning stage. Fair. Last night, uh, similar to the Guild Raid, I'd like to see a leaderboard during the top 10, blah blah blah. Scores above 100 million were set purely for the purpose of challenge, and since the last night content is not intended to push for a high level competition, we have decided to put this suggestion on hold. Okay, so they are putting this on hold. They don't necessarily want this to be a competitive game mode, so they are putting that on hold for now and they'll review it later maybe. A thing achievement tile based on damage threshold will also be a suitable addition to recognizing players' accomplishments. Honorary rewards as achievements and tiles can serve as motivation for everyone, so we're considering them with a positive attitude. So this one, they feel would be more appropriate compared to like, um, more like progress reward here. Uh, just having some titles and achievements such as this would be nice, and they think they kind of agree with that. Now, fatigue in crafting refining powder. Another major problem is that all high-ranking players need refining powder. Currently, the only reliable method is to follow the cumbersome process below. Materials, craft gear, upgrade gear, dismantle powder. To reduce the fatigue of high-ranking player, I suggest adding the following conversion option to the alchemy skill. Materials into powder. This way, hundreds of players will be able to craft numerous end swords without the need to upgrade and dismantle them, which will also reduce the burden on the server. I believe you can implement this change while maintaining the same ratio of materials and the ability spills to powder ratio at current system cost. Response! We understand the fatigue caused by the need to repeat the process of crafting, upgrading and dismantling into obtaining refining powder. Many within the team have expressed similar opinion. We're currently considering various approaches such as automating the entire crafting to dismantling process or adding a feature where items are automatically dismantled once upgrading is complete. We will thoroughly review our options and implement suitable updates whenever possible. Awesome! Now we have some closing remark. Even if you decide not to adjust the current reward, the most important thing to us is simply offering a leaderboard and extra rewards such as achievements and titles. This move will recognize and celebrate player passion and enhance our experience. Thank you for considering these suggestions. We believe that such changes will provide a richer and more reward rewarding experience to the loyal player without harming the game's accessibility. If the development team raises any concerns, we are ready to discuss further about the issue. We wholeheartedly agree that motivational factors are needed for players to have a deep, immersive gameplay experience. We put a hold on the increases of higher reward, as the move did not align with the current direction of providing excessive competition. However, we are planning to review the issues regarding improvement for honor rewards and convenience and implementing them one at a time. We're truly really grateful to all of those who share the meaningful thoughts. Very nice. Next, we have a part of the next collaboration and survey result many of you may want to know. The entire result will be released through a separate post later. Also, devs, listen is what we got the essentially take away from all of this. What do you think about the number of pickup costume in the collaboration events? Overall, first, three. Comments, the majority of users in Korea answer two, while expressing their concern about the increase in time-limited costume due to the nature, nature of collaboration events. Fair enough. Um, I do feel like, I think it's like, because it's a collaboration and it's limited, it's limited time events. I understand that people may want like less costume because it feels like it's a lot of pressure to have to get like all of the new costumes, right? But also at the same time, when it's a collab, it's like yeah, it's exciting to get as many collab characters as you can at the same time, right? Uh, so I can understand everything. Two or fewer would be better. Four or more would be better. Three is just like right like we have now. I agree. I think three or two is good. One or four or more is gonna be bad. So three or two is probably the best. So I kind of agree with this result. I think three is fine. Two is okay for certain IP. I feel like certain IP, maybe they don't have as many girls that could be added as a collab options. So I think sometimes two is okay. But definitely not four or more. I, I, I think four or more is gonna be too much. And I think only one is too little. Which method of distributing collaboration characters do you prefer? Overall first, distribute one character costume with plus 5 upgrade. It was a surprise to see it does not matter coming first in the English speaking region. Really? That is surprising. Um, I think overall getting two collaboration characters that you can obtain. So I would say like two collab costumes in the pool and one being offered for free is I think the best in my opinion. How many collaborations with other works would you consider ideal? Overall first, twice a year. I think that's fair. Twice a year was the most answered across all regions, which were also more than twice as many as once a year, coming in second place. 
Although twice a year was first in Korea, the difference between the first and second place was smaller compared to other regions. I think twi two collaborations a year is nice. Like you, you get one like around April, April, another one around September. I think it's pretty good. That gives enough time um, to prepare, etc., etc. So I, I think this is the best one. I agree with this wholeheartedly. Uh, which collaboration character skill cutting did you enjoy? Said it all apply. Overall first, Yumi. Yumi came in first place by a narrow margin. In Taiwan and Japan, Yumi was in first place while Hikage was in second. In Korea and North America, Hikage was in first place while Yumi came in second. I personally like Yuza Cross cutscene, so I was a bit let down when I saw that he placed last globally. I think people in general like Yuza Cross design a bit less, so I don't think it has to do with the cutscene itself. It probably has to do with the character itself. Um, I think Yumi was I think Yumi was pretty good. Ikage was outrageous. Like she was like in a pal driver position. So I kind of understand why people like that one a lot, especially in America. <laughs> okay, moving on. Share your thought on the evasion defense of the second guild run. Uh overall people seem to be satisfied. Uh and people are more satisfied with the second survey. Fair enough. And Yumi and Ikage are much stronger. Absolutely. Uh Yuzakura is a bit weaker a bit less uh, so the thing with Sakura is that she's okay she kind of has like an interesting like half kit where she has a little bit of AoE and then a very strong single target attack but it felt like it's a lot to spend so much on a character like this when essentially the 3 plus 5 character could essentially do the same or like a similar amount of result with way less uh, work put into building the character because everything was free for her right so that's why I think Yuzakura ended up being a bit put on the on the sideline, right? That's why I didn't pull for more than just uh, the base costume. Um, so I got like Yumi, um, Hikage, and obviously Yami at plus five, and Yuzakura is the one that I left at plus zero. The result for invasion defense and boss defense shows slight improvement, with increase in satisfied and decrease in haven't played. Compared to the first. Uh, survey about the guild rate. However, we're aware that we still need to make improvement as the satisfaction rate did not exceed 50% and because the not fun section rate has not been improved. In addition to the improvement mentioned above, more plans to take place. We'll do our best for a high satisfaction rate. Great. Next to our short answer question, we have compiled a common op opinion from players all around the world. Feel free to share your hopes for the next collaboration event. Uh, collaboration with popular IP, which is story content, character with various body shapes, not evo powered in terms of balance. Release of collaboration event. Yes, please! More rerun of collab events. I want to get guys. I wasn't playing when there was the Shushu, um, the Tensei one with the uh, Rumi, Rumi, Romi, Rami. You know who I mean. The magic girl. Uh, not weak in terms of balance. Three plus five upgrade giveaways. Adjust frequency of collaboration. Yeah, I, those are very fair feedback. Many of the players showed a high satisfaction in regard to the plus five upgrade giveaway policy. Also have uh, many requests for the re-release of collaboration event. Yes, please. There were various opinions regarding performance balance, stating that characters should neither be too strong nor too weak. In some regions, they were concerned that the collaboration event were held too frequently, mentioning that it felt like there was too much on the table. But to share your thoughts on what you like and what could be improved in the second trial of Guild Raid, short answer. The raid should be easier, simplified battle, detailed participation records, relaxed participation restriction, enhanced cooperation tool, display rankings, increased reward, enhanced cooperative elements, improved random patterns, improved tutorial. Fair enough. The overall feedback largely in line with the request for improvement in the first survey. Since this opinion are constantly raised, we will pay closer attention and continue making improvements. So essentially, it's just make the code better, make the gameplay, the game mode itself, be more easily understood and accessible. And uh, this is nice of all. That's it for today. Looking ahead to a 1.5 a year anniversary, we're making various external preparations as well as in-game content additions. We will reveal them one by one starting next week, so please stay tuned. With that, we'll wrap up today's notes with a gift. 600 dia, 40 cooked rice. And there we go. That's a lot of nice information. A lot of survey results. They are making sure to give us all of their thoughts on how they can improve. We get some sneak peek for the 1.5 year anniversary. I'm super excited about it. I'm looking forward to those. Wind and Servanaka looks great. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. So overall, a great, great developer note. I appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. Like, subscribe, all the good, good. And I'll catch you next time.